Okay, this is going to be another um, Chromecast having to do with the mind-body connection. And I do this, uh, what is it like, how long has it been since? Seven months since the whole fear pandemic has begun? And I did a couple of these uh, Chromecasts about fear in the beginning. And um, so now here we are, seven months in, and fear is still around. We're in the eighth month now. Eighth, okay. Yeah. So though it's a little bit less, I noticed. I just on my walk today with, with Shadow, not quite so many runners with masks on. I can't believe people do that. Um, most people don't have masks on when they're outside now, which is, I'm very grateful for that. <clears throat> okay. Um, but I wanted to take a different approach this time to, to really understand uh, myself as well as other people that might be interested um, of why I just never was susceptible to this fear virus. It just, it just, it's just not mine. I, it never was mine. It never was from the very beginning. I knew they were doing something, something different than they did with Zika, something different than they did with, um, uh, what was it, the brain thing, the Ebola, the, all those, so all I'm those so-called terrifying things that never were drummed up and spread uh, virally so much as this one was, this COVID-19. So I knew something was up. And um, uh, so I just want to say, here's kind of a background to show why I am the way I am. And I wish more people were like me in the sense that they were taking charge of their own body and their own lives. Okay, it started with me when I was 26, I think it was, and I was admitted into the hospital for uh, a very serious infection, a peritonitis infection. I might have even talked about this before, but each time there's a little bit different nuance uh, given to it. And I was there for a whole week uh, having antibi antibiotic, uh, antibiotics, uh, intravenous antibiotics the entire time until the last day when they said they didn't know what else to do. And it was a peritonitis, peritonitis, which is an infection of the lining of all the internal organs. It had started in my left ovary. Okay, just I like to look at the body as symbolic in the left ovary. Okay, something having to do with my creativity, my reproductive capacity, my femininity um, was disturbed. And surely that is true because the entire time I had young children, I resented the fact that I was that I had to be a mother because it was just so much not in my uh, life plan, you might say, but what plan? I had no plan. I just knew that I, I'm not really cut out to be a mother of young children, and, and those poor kids had to be with me uh, for until they were uh, seven and five and seven. And, and then I left for California, and their father uh, took care of them, except for in the summer times, and he didn't do a very good job either. So they had a hard growing up. And... Actually, when you think about it, who didn't? Um, people are either other undermothered or overmothered. Uh, there's really no beautiful, you know, little right space in the middle between. Everybody's complaining one way or another. So, in any case, um, there I was in the hospital with peritonitis, and uh, on that final day, I asked the doctor, "What? What now? What?" He said, "I said, am I going to die?" And he said, "He he is like that was not a question one asked." And just he kind of backed out of the room and looked like disappointed in me for telling the truth. And just then I was overwhelmed, absolutely overwhelmed by my situation, which was on the very edge between life and death, and I knew it. And all of a sudden, for the very first time in my life, a giant booming voice, which seemed to come from every corner of the room, it penetrated the space, but it was actually probably inside me spreading out and it said live or die it's your choice and I went to sleep and I woke up the next morning and it was gone so clearly I had made a choice I didn't know that I had made a choice until the next morning when my body responded to the choice that I had made okay I had to undergo peritonitis twice more uh, the first time I was hospitalized, or the second time I was hospitalized also, it wasn't as bad. Again, again, antibiotics. And then the third time, 
I was picking up the phone to ask my father, what should I do? It's come back. And he said, well, the only thing you can do now is take out the ovaries and the uterus. My father, who's a doctor. As he was saying this, a, the woman that I was living with handed me a piece of paper and she said, call this number. So I did. Her name is Mildred. I'm sure she's dead by now. She was a natural healer in um, Oakland, and I was in San Francisco Bay Area at the time. I, she, I called her and she said, take a clove of garlic and immerse it in hot water, and when it's, or boiling water, and when it's cooled down, drink that water and put another clove in, the, in water and drink it and just do that all night long and then come see me in the morning. I said, what, what about my pain? And she said, just do what I say. So I did. And by morning, the pain was definitely less. I went over to see her. She, and she got me under, she was in the room. I was in, it was in her house. She had this big old oaken, oaken table, which she used as a, um, you know, a place for somebody to lie down on. And she stayed in the room while I removed all my clothes. And then she put me on there naked. And then she went around my body feeling the edges of the entire body just like that and asking me what do you fear and what are you afraid of I mean and what are you guilty for what do you what do you fear and what do you feel guilty for then later she said to me and this I'll never forget this she said the mind controls the body but we think the body controls the mind, so it does. Ponder that. I never had it again. My guilt had to do with leaving my children. I'm still carrying that. I will always be carrying that. It's something that I keep processing. I keep letting it go. Okay, now, I want to put that whole scenario. So the point is, there was a relationship to my body that had to change. I had to become aware of my body, of my relationship to it, and how it was it was controlling me because I allowed it, because I saw it that way. I saw the body as controlling the mind. You can also look at this philosophically, and the whole time I was in graduate school, I was looking at the whole philosophical history of since Descartes, of how the body and mind have been completely separated in Western philosophy. And so this, this separation between the mind and the body and the treatment of the body as a machine, which allopathic doctors are still taught, uh, began then. It began in the 17th century. Maybe it began before that, but that's when it was codified, you might say. Okay, I want to put this whole, this whole um, scenario in another context now. And that is to... I. I, I discovered something on the internet probably six months ago. I've not talked about it yet, but I talk about it around here a lot. And it's, it's like four dimensions of awareness. To me, by me, through me, and as me. So let me explain. To me, things happen to me. I have victim consciousness. And that is the consciousness that is being promoted and is assumed by the culture as they're working through this COVID hysteria. To me, poor me, oh my God, I'm gonna get sick. My, I can't trust my body, I can't trust anybody else's body. Uh, this is horrifying. To me, to me, to me, victim, victim, victim. And that is pretty much the 3D consciousness that most people carry around with them. Okay, now there is a movement in culture that's probably been there since the 70s to go to what is called by me, what could be called by me. In other words, I create my own reality. <clears throat> You've heard of that before. Of course, in Miracles used to talk about that. By me. So instead of to me, instead of being the victim of anything, I've got to realize that I've created whatever's going on. Whatever's going on in the outside world, that's a reflection of myself, of a part of myself I am not yet aware of or I don't want to know about. And so the, the job is to take back the projection and recognize I am creating whatever's going on out there. So that's number two, and that's a very hard step to make, and that is the step that is being made by many people over and over again throughout their lives to move from victim consciousness to 
creative consciousness, to really being the author of one's own life. <clears throat> now, there are two more that are very interesting to me, and um, I'm pretty much in, you know, normal, my normal way is uh, by me, uh, but through me is something I've been working with also, and I didn't realize it until I, I heard this codified this way. So through me would be opening up to the universe to allow the love, which is what powers the universe, to flow through, to flow through one's own body, one's own mind and heart, taking it from the earth, taking it from the sky, moving it to the center, and then flowing it into the world. And that is through me. The universe is, is working through me, through this body-mind complex that I am. And that is a, a, a beautiful place to be. It, it is um, a place which works with polarities in a totally different way. So it's no longer either or, no longer, I'm, if I'm not this, I'm going to be that. Instead, it's seeing all polarities as just the play of the universe, and you're moving it along. Whatever is happening, you're moving it along. So that's through me. Just imagine how different our relationship of our, with our bodies is then. So our bodies are these incredible vehicles for love to flow through into the universe. And then there's the, the, the final, I mean not really final, but final in this little quad, quadruple quadruplicity, and that's as me. So that would be, I'm no longer myself, I am the universe working as this body-mind complex. Okay, I am, the, I am the universe. I am identified with unity consciousness then, which is telescoping through this body-mind complex into the universe. And, um, you know, I get glimpses of that, but I'm <clears throat> I have no idea really what it's about. Uh, but that is definitely where I'd like to be. And um, through me is a wonderful place to be on the other hand. And that's mostly where I live these days, though I go back to buy me and, and I don't know if I've been to to me for a long time, probably not since the first hospital experience was that an obvious place for me to be all the time. So once we go from to me to by me to through me, we have a completely different relationship with our own bodies. And our own bodies then become these vessels which we, we purify over and over again and constantly to help us be this, these expressions of love into the universe. And you see how different that is than the fear consciousness which rules this world still and yet I do feel that the fear from this pandemic anyway is beginning to fade. Thanks. <laughs>